Welcome back to Engineering Acoustics. Hi, this is Professor Ryan Harn. In this video, we'll learn about the acoustic wave equation and what intuition we can gather just by observing the mathematical formulation. So let's get started. We can summarize what we learned in the last video according to the acoustic variables and relationships that we were introduced to. We had the following acoustic variables. We had acoustic pressure, which is a relative pressure change with respect to atmospheric pressure. We had the fluid particle velocity, which is the time rate of displacement change of the fluid particle motion. And we had the condensation, which is a relative density change from atmospheric density. We also found that these three acoustic variables are related by the following equations. The first is the equation of state. The pressure is directly proportional to the condensation. The second is the continuity equation. Here we find a time rate of change of condensation is related to the spatial rate of change of particle velocity. And finally, Euler's equation, which conceptually is very similar to Newton's second law. We use these relationships to help us find the acoustic wave equation. So these relationships are used to find the acoustic wave equation. So what is the acoustic wave equation? Through deriving the acoustic wave equation using the prior relationships, we find that the acoustic wave equation is the second partial derivative of pressure with respect to the second partial derivative in x is equal to 1 divided by a new constant c squared multiplied by the second partial derivative of pressure with respect to time. We'll introduce the constant c here in a minute. So we have second order differentials in both space and time. And if we think back to our study of the harmonic oscillator that had some mass spring connecting it to the ground, we know that the m x double dot d squared x dt squared is an inertial term, has to do with the inertial force of the system. And we know that the Sx term is a static force related by Hooke's law. But their combination is the equation of motion, and this causes oscillation of the mass in a harmonic way. We see second order differentials in the acoustic wave equation. We have del squared p, del x squared, we also have del squared p del t squared, and there is an equality between them and proportionality according to the constant 1 divided by c squared. So do we find oscillations in the acoustic wave equation? This is a great question to ask, especially considering our prior introduction to the equation of motion for the harmonic oscillator. So if we transition this to the th third, uh, all three dimensions, x, y, and z, we find this Greek operator nabla, which is squared. This term is called the Laplacian. And for Cartesian coordinates, nabla squared is del squared, del x squared, plus del squared del y squared plus del squared divided by del, del, del z squared. This means then that the acoustic wave equation in 3D is the operator acting on P. Effectively, it's similar to multiplying it out. So what we have here is then del squared P del x squared plus del squared P del y squared plus del squared p del z squared is equal to 1 divided by c squared del squared p del t squared. Again, 
we find these second orders now existing on all of the spatial dimensions as well as on time as it was before. We still pose that question, do we realize oscillations in uh, space and time? Before we answer that, let's look at spherical coordinates because the mathematical opera operator Nabla squared or the Laplacian, Laplacian has a very complicated uh, organization for spherical coordinates. So just remembering uh, the notation between Cartesian coordinates x, y, and z, and a point here in spherical space, we have the following coordinates. The radius r, which is the radial distance from the Cartesian origin to the point, say p it's a function of r it's also a function of an angle that we will show here as phi which is the angle of the projection of r in the xy plane and the last variable in spherical coordinates is theta it's the angle down from the z-axis so in spherical coordinates, the Laplacian operator is significantly more complex. Thankfully, if there are no angular changes of acoustic pressure, which is in fact a very physical realization of acoustic pressure, then we only need to study the radial variation of pressure. In this case, the acoustic wave equation is del squared of the quantity r times p, the radius times the pressure, on del r squared is equal to one on c squared once again of del squared of r times p on del t squared. So it's quite similar to the case where there was one dimension x, but now rather than just pressure taking the derivatives, we have r times p taking the derivatives. So let's go further with this. In one dimension, the simpler case, we have second order derivatives in space and time, and these are related or proportional through a constant c. So if we do have some exchange of oscillations between space and time, what might, might, what might that look like? It's reasonable to hypothesize that oscillations occur in both space and time. So for instance, let's consider this one dimensional fluid space. Fluid particles arranged in a line that are shown here as the cyan or blue dots, and they're hypothetically connected through the, these magenta lines, which is the spatial dimension. So let's cause some perturbation in space. What we see here are a few iterations in time, seeing how the line has elapsed. So the particle moved forward very slightly in the first time instant, and that pushes on the second particle in the next time instant, which been, then continues pushing in the following time instance, instances. But not only is it changing in space, it changes in time. So we have these increments down, 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 and so on. And as time elapses, as you plot this behavior out, both in time and space, you see two things happen. Firstly, in space, a wave develops. But also, if you look back in time at the motion of each particle, it also looks like a wave develops. So this is a good thought experiment that helps us recognize that even in one dimension, space and time are proportional and related in the acoustic wave equation, specifically to this constant C that we'll speak more about in an upcoming video. So let's summarize what we've learned. We've learned that the wave equation relates the change of acoustic pressure in space to the pressure change in time. And if we assume that pressure changes do not occur in certain spatial dimensions, the wave equation simplifies significantly, especially for spherical coordinates. The second order nature of the wave equation in space and time, in other words, x and t, suggests that the oscillations are somehow related and they might occur both in space and time. 
and we'll explore this hypothesis in the next video. That's it for this video. In the next video, we'll learn about solutions to the acoustic wave equation. In other words, we'll learn about acoustic waves.